You just gonna stand there? You can come over here and we can look at this marker together. You just stand there. Okay. Stick around to the end of the video because there's a giveaway. Okay, homies, today we're looking at the Smash KO marker. So the color I have today is called Lennox Bluis. The directions for this marker are use profusely and shake your money maker. They also have a link to smashink.com, which is no longer working. And we got a good old warning label explaining that this thing contains xylene and that it's flammable, so you should keep away from kids or something, who knows. It's got a nice firm felt nib. This nib's actually the same as the Uni Paint Broads and the K71 Crink. Because it contains xylene, it has a metal body. On one side of the nib, it's a nice chisel, on the other side, it's a round bullet, okay? On the chisel side, it's seven millimeters by four millimeters. This nib is seven millimeters wide. The whole marker is 14 and a half centimeters long, and it's about two centimeters wide. It's about the size of my hand. I do have kind of small hands, but it still is a pretty comfortable carry. If we pull out the nib and we give it a little waif, yeah, it just immediately smells like xylene, which is a great sign. Really make sure to shake this marker. Number one complaint people have of this marker is because they didn't shake it enough. That being said, let's get in close for a really satisfying saturation. This marker saturated super fast and the paint was just really eager to be used. What a nice blue color, ooh, so good. The metal bottom of the marker was round. Like it had a little indent and it made it impossible to stand up unless it was very perfectly stood. And I couldn't live with that. So to fix that, I just went at it with a little hammer and I tapped that back to make it concave. And now it curves inward instead of outward and it sits up nice and perfect. You can stand the marker up. Now let's test it on some surfaces. The first one we got up is this little tile brick. The caps of these markers are really nice. They come off easier than the uni paints, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off in my pocket. You can see how well it writes. It's got a nice coverage. The opacity of the blue is really solid. I see the opacities be somewhat of an issue with some of the other ones. You can see this marker does start to streak a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the streaking a little bit later, but be aware that this marker has a streaking issue, but there's a way to fix that. The reason the opacity isn't super great on this marker is because it's a paint ink mix. It's pretty much a 50-50 mix between an oil-based xylene thin paint and a dye-based ink. Uh, this makes it great for staining power and color, but that does mean you lose a little bit of opacity sometimes. It writes super well on the glass, and now onto the stop sign. Despite being an oil-based marker, this marker dries surprisingly quick. That definitely is because of the xylene in there, because xylene is a quicker drying solvent, but it is very nice compared to a lot of other oil-based paints. It just dried a lot quicker and I didn't smear it around as much. Here you can see I'm giving a little kind of drip test. Now if we suppress the nib when we write, we can actually get this marker to drip. And it's not just a random drip, it's actually a pretty controlled drip. At the right angles, it drips from the tip of the nib, not just from the valve system, which is super nice, which is unlike the Uni PX30s. Moving on to a painted surface. This is painted with some like house bucket paint. This is just painted with normal bucket paint for a house. Uh, you can see here, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna write. You'll see anytime I think I have to roll the marker for whatever reason. <laughs> You can see here how streaky it gets. This is because this is a really grippy surface, right? This paint is a latex-based paint and it's very grippy. That being said, the, if the marker is super juiced, it does streak less, but streaking still is kind of like the number one problem with this marker. But like I said, there will be a fix for that soon enough. You will just have to wait and have some patience. Practicing a little bit of black letter down at the bottom. Take note of how big the A is compared to the rest of it. That's why it looks so bad. Now we're onto an oil-based painted metal. So here is another super grippy surface and you can see how it streaks. Um, this is a little more annoying because on this surface, it definitely had a different style of streaking and I didn't like it as much. The marker had to be super duper juiced and even then it was still streaking up. Next, we've got some, uh, I don't know what this type of wood is called. You know, where it's like the sawdust they can pack together. It's like the scrap wood. Either way, we're writing on the surface of this. The plan for this piece of wood is to write on it with a whole bunch of different markers and then leave it out in the sun for a while and see which ones have better UV performance than others. So we will not be buff testing this piece of wood later because I don't even think I could buff test this if I wanted to. Moving on to our metal canvas, you can see that streaking happens again, which is a little bit worrisome because this is a really smooth surface and it's still starting to streak. But that only happens with faster lines. So if you're working a little slower, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Next, we're gonna try reversing the nib around and just using the unmodified bullet version. 
I really enjoy it when it's flipped around for whatever reason. I think it creates a lot of interesting texture and line weight that's a little bit different than a normal marker. Also, it, it got all over my fingers. But uh, that's besides the point. I got a little blue finger now. You can see if I use just the edge of the marker, it becomes really, really fine pointed. And uh, from this point on, I'm just distracted, doodling on the piece of metal, forgetting that I was filming. Uh, forgive me, I am weak. Next, I'm gonna show you the secret to getting this marker to flow much better, and that's flaring out the nib. So you can do this for both sides, but I'm just gonna do it on this side because I still wanna use the chisel side later. You're gonna take an X-Acto knife or any sharp knife. You're gonna break up the firm fibers of the felt nib. It softens the whole nib of the marker and increases surface area of the marker, which means higher paint flow. So you can see I'm doing slices, I'm doing poking and ripping, all sorts of different techniques to get this nice and flared out. So here's what it looks like now. Now we just gotta rough up the nib. So you can roll it around, you can push it down, you can draw with it, whatever you wanna do to juice up that nib and get it all broken, broken up so it writes better. And here's what it looks like later. It's been flared out and now it creates a much thicker line, but on top of that, it lays down a lot more paint. And here you can see it starts to streak. That's because it wasn't juiced. So remember to keep the marker juiced no matter what or else it'll leak. And also the nib doesn't stay in very well if you flip it around, so keep that in mind. You gotta make sure to keep this marker well shaken, and on top of that, keep it well juiced. If you can do those things, this marker will treat you great, and you'll get some really nice paint flow with a really high quality paint that's, as you'll see later, pretty hard to buff. That, I didn't flare out the nib too much, so I was able to flip it back around and push it back into place, which is good for me because I like having that chisel calligraphy tip. Ta-da! We're going back to our painted piece of wood to show you that if it's flared out and it's good juice, it won't streak as bad. So once again, we're writing. As you can see, wasn't juiced enough. We're gonna juice it again. And there we go. It's looking much better. That flared out nib creates a lot of variation at the edges of the line, and I really like that. So my advice is if you're gonna get this marker, plan on flaring it out. Flaring naturally occurs if you use the marker, but this is a marker that I would say out of the box, flare it. It just works better. What's up guys? It's Kai's here to tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by you guys. You guys are the reasons I create content and you guys are the reason I continue to make content now even when other platforms don't show me love. I love you guys so much and enjoy the rest of the video. Let's talk about the chemicals we're gonna use to buff test this. First we got just water and then onto some weaker alcohol, this is 70% and then we have some pure alcohol, denatured alcohol. Moving on to acetone, which is definitely the strongest and then Gugon Graffiti Remover, which you'll see why that's in front of acetone later. And then we've also got our fingernails and a straight razor onto the brick. Using a fingernail and scratching at it, and it doesn't really do anything. I can't get any of the paint to really come off. Exacto blade, give it a little scratch. It starts to pick up a little bit, but it's not really gonna come off this surface. This is not gonna work. Cracking open this water bottle, we're gonna pour a little bit of water in there, and we're gonna go at it with an abrasive, a really abrasive, and start scrubbing. And you can see, even with water and a lot of scrubbing, I can start to get this paint off. Keep in mind, that's pretty much the same with any paint. If you abrase it enough, it'll come off. This is that weaker alcohol. You can see the weaker alcohol doesn't do anything. Moving on to the stronger alcohol, and this does start to take it up. That being said, it's not the best still. Acetone does get it up, but the problem with acetone is that it dries fast. So that's all dried. Now it's just smeared paint. We're skipping water for this one. There's no point. We're going right to this weaker alcohol. We're gonna put it on here, and then we're gonna go out with the abrasive, and. Even the weaker alcohol with the abrasive takes it off. Moving on to the stronger alcohol and the abrasive, right off. And we're giving it a good scrub here. <laughs> Next up is that acetone plus a little bit of the abrasive and it just, you don't even need an abrasive, it just wipes right off. So acetone's definitely the strongest, but it comes with the downside of being super fast drying. You can see as I'm scrubbing it, it's, it's fully dried now. Now I just have dried paint smeared around, right? It thinned out the paint, smeared it around, and then dried and left the paint back on the surface. That's why this Gugon Graffiti Remover is much better. It's a slower drying solvent. Also, side note, look at these cool textures. It may not be as strong as acetone and it doesn't pick it up as well, but what it does do is take longer to dry. So what that means is you can get in there and scrub it and abrase it with that. We can fully clean off the stop sign and return it to the place it belongs. We're lining up all of them together here now, all four of our solvents, and we're gonna let them sit for a while and then we're gonna scrub. Acetone removes the most, but it does dry the fast. So if I really wanna remove this, I'm gonna have to use that Goo Gone. Moving over to our piece of glass, Put in a little piece of paper so you guys can see, because I love you. Starting with a fingernail, and it doesn't scratch off at all. Actually, it adheres really well to the surface. Straight razor, and well, straight razor is all it takes to get this stuff removed. 
If you push at the right angle, pretty much anything comes off of glass with a straight razor. Like anything. Because glass is non-porous, it means there's not a lot of holes and dimples into the surface. So there's not a lot of things for it to adhere to. It has a really nice smooth surface. So with a straight razor, you can push between the paint on the surface and the glass and you can get it to sparkle off, which also leads for some really beautiful up close shots. Like truly magical and super duper satisfying to do. And after you're done, you can take all this dust and it's not actually useless. What you can do is you can use it to season pretty much any of your food. It's delicious and it's colorful and it's super healthy for you. Ignore the warnings about it being a neurotoxin. That's just what the government wants you to think. Oh, hello there. Are you interested in winning a free marker and some stickers? Well, for this video, we're doing a giveaway. This isn't sponsored by blankslaps.com, but that is the company I'm using just because I like them. The winner of the giveaway will get one Smash KO marker and a pack of eggshell stickers from BlankSlaps.com. To enter the giveaway, you need to be subscribed on YouTube and subscribed on Instagram. I will check. And then you need to leave a comment using the word red. That's how I'm going to filter out the comments. So if you've done both those things, then leave a comment and you have to use the word red. You can't just post a comment with the word red. I will disqualify you. Onto the metal canvas. For whatever reason, I decided to mix all the solvents except for the Goo Gone and give it a good scrub. Uh, if you're working with acetone, you should be wearing gloves. It's literally a neurotoxin and they think it could even cause depression. So don't be stupid like me, wear gloves. But you can see I actually ended up needing the Goo Gone to remove this. Now that the paint on the board has dried and it's looking good, it's time for us to go over it with a different paint for us to give it a cover test. So we're just using more of that house paint and I really didn't want to get my brush dirty because when you use that big brush I use in my videos, it's such a pain to clean out later and it takes so long. So I was like, screw using that big lame brush. I can just be the brush. And I decided to finger paint on this and it was very satisfying and very fun. Uh, I definitely enjoyed it. I did get paint all over myself though. So keep that in mind. And in the end, I'm just as effective as a paintbrush. Give me a paintbrush. And you can see 24 hours after drying and there's not a lot of bleed through. Um, this might not be the best paint to test this with because I'm sure if you were to use an oil-based paint This would bleed through a lot more, but for this bucket paint it doesn't bleed through Well, if there's one thing you take away from this video It's that sometimes you're gonna want to finger paint so you don't have to clean out a paintbrush later And when you do that sometimes you're gonna get some paint in your hair some paint in your shirt and well That's totally okay because it was much better than having to clean out a paintbrush Overall, the Smash KO marker does a pretty great job. The xylene based paint in here performed pretty well and is pretty hard to buff. That being said, the paint doesn't flow super well and the marker had some issues with streakiness. This can be resolved though by flaring out the nib and making sure it's super duper juiced. But be warned, if you use it on grippier surfaces, it does streak. One thing I really like about it is that it's a really strong marker. It has an aluminum body and this cap is not gonna break. Like I think you could literally step on this marker and the marker would be totally fine. The cap comes off and on super easy. But that being said, it stays on. Like the cap's not gonna fall off. I'm not worried about this leaking in my pockets. The paint ink formula in here is super duper powerful, pretty hard to buff, and it's drippable. So if you wanna drip this marker, you totally can get it to drip. Because it has dye-based ink inside of here, it is pretty staining too. I, I hear the purple and the red are the most staining. So if you really want some stain power, I'd pick up one of those colors instead. Overall, this marker, in my opinion, gets a 9.5 out of 10. The one complaint I have with it is that it does start to streak unless it's been flared out, which is kind of a shame because I really want to use that chisel side of the marker, but it doesn't really work super well. So if you're in the market for a really nice, powerful stain air marker, and you like uni paints, or you just really like pump action markers, this is a marker you should 100% go for. Go pick one up. You can buy it from blankslaps.com or I'm sure you can find it somewhere else. I love you homies so much and thank you for watching this video. It means a lot that you guys are supporting me now, especially you who have come from TikTok over to my YouTube. If you aren't aware, TikTok has been really mean to me lately and just decided that it doesn't want to pay me anymore for any of my content. This sucks, but I'm hopeful because I'm getting closer to YouTube monetization. And once I can get YouTube monetization, I will be able to set aside more time to work on YouTube videos, which is super exciting because this is what I want to do. I love you guys so much. If you'd like to help me out with getting monetization, go watch some of my other videos. All I need now are some extra watch hours. I have a great podcast. Great podcast. I don't know if I can call it great. I have a podcast that I enjoy making and it's, easy, it's an easy thing to turn on in the background and just listen to while you do whatever else you're doing. Love you homie so much. See you guys in the next video.